today is miracles. Whether you believe in them or whether you question them. Uh, this is some, some of this is going to be a little controversial. Um, but it doesn't need to be in some disregard. Um, in just a minute we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. And part of the miracles that we are going to talk about have to do with speaking in tongues. And they have to do with whether or not you believe in the miracle of the Holy Spirit. Now, Pentecost is a big deal. I'm really surprised the pastor left me in charge. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's a loose term, but th this is a very big deal. Uh, Fifty days after the resurrection, the church was actually born. It was actually started. Um, the, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit anointed the apostles... And the church began. Uh, I want to read a quote from uh, from Reverend Dr. Mark Roberts that kind of explains it a little bit differently. Uh, Pentecost is not as well known and as popular as Christmas and Easter, though it commemorates a watershed event in Christianity. In many ways, Pentecost is the birthday of the church. For Christians, Pentecost is a holiday on which we commemorate the, follow, or the coming of the Holy Spirit on the early followers of Jesus. Before the events of the first Pentecost, which came a few weeks after Jesus' death and resurrection, there were followers, but there was no movement. Anyway, no movement that could be meaningfully called a church. Thus, from an historical point of view, Pentecost is the day on which the church was started. This is also true from a spiritual perspective, since the Spirit brings the church into existence and enlivens it. Thus, Pentecost is the church's birthday. And that's a pretty big deal. <coughs> Pastors are here for Christmas and he's here for Easter, and you get me for Pentecost. <laughs> now, during Lent, um, I was asked to give a presentation that involved presenting my dad to the attendees. I don't know how many people were here during that Latin presentation, but it was a surly group. They were up at 6.30 in the morning, and they had to come and listen to me, so it was kind of scary for me. I was nervous. But I introduced them to my dad and how the topic at hand was lessons from the cross, how my dad figured into that lessons, those lessons that I, I gained from the cross. Now keep that in mind because we're going to come back to this in this little journey that we've got going so let's get started on whether or not we believe or whether we question miracles. Here's my family dynamic as I was growing up. Came from a very, very, very poor family. Lived in Fort Dodge. My mother was a woman of faith. My father was a man of the flesh. Now, if opposites attract, let's visualize in this room, if we had those two personalities and the people of faith were on the north side and the people of flesh were on the south side. At that point in this room, my mother would be in Minneapolis and dad would be in Kansas City. They were that far apart. <laughs> okay. Now we went to Riverside Methodist Church in Fort It was six blocks down a great big steep hill. And every Sunday my mother walked five little kids down that hill, we go back up when we came home, but down that hill for Sunday school and church. Almost without fail, every Sunday. Now dad, on the other hand, he went to church on Christmas. Uh, he went to church on Easter. And if his birthday fell on a Sunday, for some reason he made the church on his birthday. However, however, every Sunday dinner, involved what went on in church and Sunday school that day. Now, I don't know if we still have Sunday dinners. Since our kids are gone, we don't have them like we used to. But that used to be, and still is in some cases, where a family gets together, they have their biggest meal of the week, they have their conversation about what went on, and they have their bonding time amongst themselves. So, every Sunday we talk about what went on in church for dad's dinner. I don't, want to look, I don't want Dad to look like a heathen. Um, 
He grew up during the Depression. He grew up very poor. He grew up with a very stern father and, and no mother. And he knew more and had more faith than he ever let on to because keep in mind, he was a man of the flesh. All right. So consequently, at least once a year, and sometimes more than that, during that Sunday dinner, somebody would say, so Dad, what do you think about speaking in tongues? Think that's a miracle? Okay, now, a block from where we live was Sandberg's Groceries. Now, this is 50 years ago. I lied, that was 60 years ago. <laughs> and in towns like Fort Dodge, Marshall Town, medium-sized towns, and even small towns, there was a little neighborhood grocery store in almost every little neighborhood. Sandberg's Grocery in the west side of Fort Dodge was our neighborhood grocery store. And the Sandbergs were German through and through. Wonderful people. But you couldn't understand a word she spoke because it was such broken German. What? I mean, it was very difficult to understand Mrs. Sandberg. Original question. So, Dad, what do you think about speaking in tongues? You think it's a miracle? He automatically would say, why don't you go ask Mrs. Sandberg what she thinks, and then come back and tell me what she said. Well, there's a huge clue in there that we're going to come back to do. But Dad was adamant about one thing when it came to this topic, that conversations are worthless unless you understand each other. Okay, Mom's come back. Was she's in Minneapolis. Was completely different. Mom's comeback to that was you don't have to go and talk to Mrs. Sander because the Bible is all you need to believe. The miracle was the people who needed to hear, and it was a miracle. So just believe. So now, if you were me, here we're going back to what I was asking you to do. But in my shoes or use me as you but where would you be in your journey in your faith if you were a young person and you sat between somebody that said yes it's a miracle and somebody that said yeah it happened but the wisest people in the community at the time said they were drunk what do you think well for years I thought Mrs. Sandberg was a miracle Okay, let's fast forward. The Holy Spirit was and it is the last piece of the faith puzzle. And the first step in a long, long, lifelong journey. So by flashing forward, we're going to go to getting married. <laughs> what do you get when you get married? Well, if you're more erotic, you get lucky. <laughs> if you're Shirley, you more. <laughs> if you're Arnie Hankin, you got really lucky. And if you're Darlene, you know that she's. If you're Denise Stuckey, you hit the jackpot. <laughs> Here, here's what I think you get when you get married. You get the other half of your heart. When we talk about opposites attracting, and you hear it all the time when it comes to you. So that other half of your heart that you didn't get is the one that you were missing, and that's the part that you need. You get the other half of your energy. I need to do this. You get that drive to get things done, and it's good. You also get the other half of your conscience. Now, this is from a man's point of view, and I don't mean to speak for all of the men in the congregation, and if I'm wrong in your case, I'm sorry. I'm probably right in your wife's side. But if take it for what, you, what it's worth. If you're a man, you've probably heard yourself say on a day like today, why are we going to his graduation or her graduation? Any of came to any of ours? Or if you're driving... 200 miles for a wedding. What are we going to this wedding for? Not a single person in this family came to any of our kids' weddings. 
Why? Or on a nice, beautiful Sunday afternoon when you're on your way over to do some yard work for a friend, it's like, why are we going over to do yard work when we never get a thank you or we never get any help ourselves? I don't get it. That's the man in it. The man in me. And that other half of your conscience is also, when you get married, the other half of your Holy Spirit. Because I hear it. You've maybe heard it. The answer to those three questions or any question that fits into those paragons, you hear, just shush. <laughs> There's right and there's wrong. There's a miracle there. You gotta believe it. Because you feel it. Okay, let's flash forward one more time. When you get kids, oh my gosh. These days raising kids without the help of the Holy Spirit would be I'm glad we're done because it would scare me to death. We've got five children. Four of our children are currently on their journey using their inside voices. We've got one, Jordan. Some of you might know Jordan. He lives here in town. <laughs> He's always got a smile on his face. He hasn't got a nickel to his hand. And when our kids were growing up, I told them, you will never come into my home with pierced ears or tattoos. There's no debate, there's no questions, no tattoos, no pierced ears. Trisha, he'll get it. Jordan shows up with a tattoo, a big tattoo, of Christ right on his head. What am I going to do about that? <laughs> That's our Jordan. I don't know if you've ever anticipated seeing somebody read a text in church, but the other day I texted Jordan about today. You <laughs> loaded this. Um, it was at 4:02 in the afternoon. I said, "So, Jordan, how do you feel about speaking in tongues?" I'm going to be having a presentation this week on a topic. That was 4:02. At 4:03. He hasn't had any time to think, do anything else. I don't even know how you can text this in one minute. But he comes back and he says, there is different views on it depending on the denomination. And are you supposed to be going and giving a speech for it or against it? <laughs> oh, and then at 404, I text back and I says, well, just the importance of the one-time event on Pentecost, miracle or not. Um, useful then, not necessary today. What do you think? Well, the Bible talks about two different kinds. This was 405. The Bible talks about two different kinds of speaking in tongues. The spiritual gift that's in Corinthians of speaking in tongues, or the prayer language speaking in tongues that's mentioned in Ephesians. <laughs> he, he didn't get that from me. And I don't know how he got it that fast, unless it's committed to memory. Or if there's a little bit of the Holy Spirit that's working through that void. Well, if there is, that's part of that miracle. And if it is, he got it, even though he may have been lost in the process of being distributed. There wasn't any to it. And he says, oh boy, from a historical standpoint, hmm, you may not want to quit your day job. <laughs> lessons on the cross. After I had this, uh, this presentation, I was asked what scripture I based it on, and unfortunately I based it on the book of Sam, my dad. Um, I'm not very good at basing things on scripture. But the three lessons that I came away from during Lent from the cross were that, and, and these are per my dad, you should never forget the sacrifice. Second lesson is that Christ suffered for all of us. And the third was, even the most unlikely know what's right. It's in their heart. 
It's that Holy Spirit. Back to Dad and Mrs. Sandberg. Conversations are no, le- no good unless you understand them. Well, I'm not so sure that he didn't mean or that he wasn't saying this so that somebody would argue with him. I'm not so sure that he didn't mean that the conversations are no good unless someone understands it. To me, it's pretty simple when it comes to miracles, whether you believe them or not. It's really very simple. Speaking in tongues is a miracle. Whether you want to call it speaking in tongues, speaking in other languages, whatever it was, it was a miracle. According to the book of Doris, my mother, it's in the Bible. I believe it. I trust it. The coming of the Holy Spirit was a miracle. According to the book of Doris, it's in the Bible. I believe it. According to the book of Denise, it's here right now. And there is a difference between right and wrong. So from this whole conversation, I would say if there is a miracle that you are struggling with, Try and put it into the context of your journey and of your life and believe it. Go with it. Amen.